Okay, so this is uh, Algebra 7.1 for Conceptual Geometry. Um, objective students will be able to estimate the solution of a system of linear equations by graphing. So, a couple of fill-ins here. Um, a system of linear equations is two or more linear equations, and we should say on the same graph. And the solution to a linear system is the pair of numbers x, y that solves both equations and it's also the intersection of the two graphs. So if you look right here we have an intersection of these two graphs right here and so the coordinates for that would be 1, 2, negative 1. So we'd write 2, negative 1 and that should be our solution. Well, we're going to check that. We're going to check that by plugging into each of these equations. So first we're going to check 3x plus 2y equals 4. And since the x is 2, I'm going to plug in a 2, plus 2y, where the y is negative 1, equals 4. 6 plus negative 2 equals 4. And then, sure enough, that's true, right? 6 minus 2 equals 4. So it works for the blue one. Now let's see if it works for the red equation. So we're going to have negative, and instead of an x, we're going to have 2 plus 3, and instead of a y, we're going to have a negative 1 equals negative 5. So that's negative 2, and 3 times negative 1 is just negative 3 equals negative 5. Negative 2, negative 3 equals negative 5. Yep. So that works. All right, so that's how we check our solution. And there we go. We got a, we got a good working solution. So let's try this next one. Find the solution to the systems of equations. Well, you'll notice that these are not really ready to graph. So we need to get these in a way that we know how to graph. And the only way that, um, or the easiest way I should say for us, that we've learned how to graph is using slope-intercept form, which looks like this, y equals mx plus b. So we need to get these equations to look like this equation. All right, well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do one in red, one in blue. And I have this x plus y equals negative 2, so I need to get this y all by itself. So I need to get rid of this x. Well, if I want to do that, I can subtract x from both sides. So let's do that. This would cancel. I would just have a y equals. And I can't do anything with these two. I can't combine them because they're not like terms. So I'm just going to say negative x minus 2. Okay, so there's one of my equations. Now let's try the other one in blue. Again, I'm going to get that y all by itself. So the first thing i got to do is get rid of this 2x. So I'll subtract 2x. Subtract 2x. And I get negative 3y equals negative 2x minus 9. And now i got to get rid of this 3. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 3. These guys cancel out, and I would get y equals... Negative 2 divided by negative 3 is just 2 thirds x. And negative 9 divided by negative 3 is positive 3. All right, so let's graph these guys. Let's graph the red one first. Remember when graphing, I look at this number, this number that's all by itself. That's my starting point. It tells me where I'm going to start on the y-intercept. Well, that one's a negative 2, so I'm going to start right there at negative 2. Now, forgive my lines. They may be a little funky because I'm using a stylus on an iPad. And this negative sign here, that means that I'm going to go down one, over one, down one, over one, down one, over one. Because really, this is like a negative one out in front. And if I was to really think about it, it's really like a negative one over one. Where this is my rise and this is my run. So that's why I go down one, over one. So let's do that. Again, my line is not the best, but trying to just go down one over one. Okay, now let's try this one. The blue one says that I have a starting point at three. So I'm going to go up three and make a little dot there. And now it says that my slope is two thirds. So I'm going to go up two over three. Again, rise over run. So up two over up two over three, and that also means that I can go down two, back three, down two, back three. 
All right, well now it's pretty easy to tell that my solution looks like it's right there, right? And it looks like it's negative three comma one. All right, so I could plug these back in and test it. So I'm gonna try that real quick. Put in in black. So and for a y, I'm gonna put a one. For negative x, I'm gonna put a negative three. So it's a negative negative minus two. Well, negative times a negative makes a positive, and three minus two, sure enough, that's one. All right, let's try it in this one. Y is one, two thirds times negative three plus three. Uh, well, two thirds times negative three, that would just be negative one plus three. I'm sorry, that'd be negative 2. This, this should be negative 2, because 3 times 3, the 3's cancel out, and I just have a 2 here. Alright. And negative 2 and positive 3, that makes 1 as well, so that works as well. Alright, so there we've done it. And if you're in class, you probably already did this, so you don't need to do that, but I had you guys check these three on your own. So I had, these are just practice problems, I had you guys graph them, and... Um, yeah, so you can try those on your own if you want, and I'm going to move on to the next page. Okay, so this problem didn't wasn't so great in class, so I'm going to do it a different way, um, not graphically. I'm going to show you how to set this up. Um, you're the webmaster of the websites for the science club and the math club. Assuming that the number of visits at each site can be represented by a linear function, use the information to the table to predict when the number of daily visits to the two sites will be the same. So we're going to make our total number of daily visits be y. So y equals the total number of daily visits. And we could calculate the total number of daily visits by starting, this will be science, by starting with our current daily visits, which is 400 for science, and then adding to that 25 more visits every month. So x will be number of months. All right, now let's do math math will also be y equals, and but we're going to start with 200, and we're going to say plus 50x each month. And they really just want to know when these two will be the same. Well, they want to know when this y will equal this y. Well, if these are the same, and y equals this, and y equals this, we can just set these two things equal to each other. So let's do it that way. So 400 plus 25x equals 200 plus 50x. I'm going to subtract the 25x from both sides and I'm going to subtract 200 from both sides. Okay, these would cancel, these would cancel, and I get 25x and I get 200. Give me just a little bit more space. Now I'm going to divide everything by 25, getting these guys to cancel. And 200 divided by 25 is 8. So we can know that after 8 months, it will be the same. Now, if I want to know what my y is, how many visits I'll have, I can plug this back into any one of these equations. So let's do that off on the side here. I'll do it in red. And I'll just pick this top one. So y equals 400 plus 25 times 8 now instead of x. So y equals 400 plus, and 25 plus 8 is actually, 4 times 25 would be 100, so 25 times 8 is 200. So y would equal 600. So that would be my solution for this, 8 and 600. All right, on this problem here, we tried to do this graphically, and it just didn't work because we couldn't have a graph that was big enough. It was just, it got too big. But we can still do this algebraically. So let me show you how we can say that we can write a little equation for the Spanish Club. It says the Spanish Club website currently receives 500 daily visits. Okay, so Spanish Club will do in green. We want to know how many it's going to have, why. Start with 500 daily. And if the number of daily visits increases by 20 per month, when will the Spanish Club site have the same number of daily visits as the Science Club? Okay, so we got to go back up here and compare it to the science club, which is this equation here. So we're going to say that the science club, which was 400 plus 25x, 
is now going to be set equal to the Spanish club, and we're going to see when they'll be the same. So, do a little algebra. Um, subtract 20x. Subtract 20x. That would cancel. Subtract 400. Subtract 400. That would cancel. 25 minus 20 makes 5x. And 500 minus 400 makes 100. And divide both sides by 5. You get x equals 20. So that would take 20 months. So that's kind of why it didn't fit on our graph. It just was too big. Uh, we only had like a 10 by 10 graph. So it was, just, it was just way too big. And let's see how many sites or how many visits it will have after 20 months. But in order to do that, we could just plug it into any one of our equations. I'll just go ahead and pick the Spanish one, and I'll do it in red again. So we know that the number of daily visits equals 500 plus 20, and then now we're going to times that by 20. All right, so y equals, I forgot to put parentheses in this answer up here, 8 comma 600, not 8600. So um, 500 plus 20 times 20, so that's 500 plus 400, and 500 plus 400 equals 900. So our answer here would be 20 comma 900. There's our answer solution. Okay, so there you go. Sorry about the mess up on that problem in class, but um, hopefully that helps.